And now, from the Room 111 Studios, it's Hacking Engagement with James Sternovich. Hey there, listener. Welcome back to the Hacking Engagement Podcast. I'm so glad you're here. I have to set this episode up with a bizarre story. I mean, come on. Isn't that kind of what you expect when you turn on this podcast? Well, this is a great one. It was a number of years ago. I don't remember how many. I just know it was a long time ago. And it was in October. And I'm telling you, October in Ohio, as I've said often this month, is pretty magical. And it was one of those days, man, one of those days where you can just, you can see the space. And yet the sun is so bright at the same time. And we had a gas leak. (laughs) Everybody had to evacuate the building. So, you know, it's a great time to have a gas leak if you're going to have one. So we all went out there on the practice football field. The whole student body. It was bedlam. But what was interesting is I had this really sharp kid in my class who was very soft-spoken but incredibly droll. And he would just say the funniest darn things now and then. So he walks up to me on this brilliant October day. And he says, Mr. Sturdivant, uh, I have to say that our staff looks a lot better in unnatural lighting. (laughs) So, you know, I'm telling you, our schools are like caves. They're like prison cells. They're like these factory floors. They're like these institutions. And believe me, your surroundings can literally just suck the breath out of everything. So my students had to have a gas leak so they could go outside in the beautiful October Ohio atmosphere and start to see again, start to smell again, start to feel again. Now that told me something. So enter a fine young woman from Manhattan, Kansas. Her name is Casey Avey, Dr. Casey Avey. And I'm going to have her on today talking about how we can deinstitutionalize our classrooms. She's not going to be alone. She's got some friends with her. She's got some colleagues with her. She's uh, going to be joined today by Heather Smith, Haley Smith, and Richard Hancock. And so what we're going to talk about today is how you can take your institutionalized classroom and turn it into this inviting space. And when you do that, you create a family atmosphere in your room which enhances relationships, which enhances engagement. Something else that you're going to hear Casey and her friends talk about a lot is their classroom core values. So here they are. Creativity, grit, attitude, service, weirdness, (laughs) leadership, and self-awareness. Buckle up, man. You're going to love this episode. Hey, so get this, listener. My publisher contacts me and says, I love the way hacking engagement is selling. How about doing 50 more? (laughs) I was all over it like a cheap suit. So the name of the book is Hacking Engagement Again, 50 Teacher Tools That Will Make Students Love Your Class. And it's going to be available on Amazon's virtual shelves in the late summer of 2017. In the meantime, if you're looking for more teacher empowerment resources, as always, visit hacklearning.org. Now let's get back to the solutions part of the Hacking Engagement Podcast. So here I am in the Room 111 studio, and it's a Friday afternoon. And I'm telling you something, mid-October, Columbus, Ohio, Friday afternoon, it just doesn't get any better than that. And we're talking about 72-degree temperatures. I'm surrounded by hardwood maples that are just red and gold. Uh, It's just about perfect in Columbus, Ohio. So, of course, I'm going to go somewhere else. (laughs) I'm going to go out to Manhattan, Kansas. And when I think of Manhattan, Kansas, I think of the Wildcats of Kansas State. So I've got four Wildcats to talk to me today. How you doing, Wildcats? Great! (laughs) Doing pretty good. (laughs) And so we're talking Manhattan, Kansas, and what's what's it like in Manhattan today? Well, it's a little warmer than usual, but it's sunny. I think the rain's going to hold off until tomorrow. Beautiful. So you guys having a good good Friday as well, I take it. We are. We had a spirit week, and so we capped off the week. School's over, right? School's over. Friday afternoon, school's over. That's that's a good deal. Yep, we're out. (laughs) And so I'm going to let these uh, fine young people introduce one at a time. 
go ahead, folks. All right, you first. Um, my name is Heather Smith. I was a paraeducator for Dr. Casey A.B. last year. I am also a school psychology practicum student right now wow. here at Anthony Middle School. Yes. so That's, that's impressive. Yes, thank you very much. So it's, it's been quite the journey with, with these three. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And I'm Dr. Casey Avey. I've been a special education teacher uh, 20 plus years, and I um, just recently moved to a new position in the eighth grade working with different kinds of learners. Uh-huh. I'm just excited to be here. Okay, beautiful. Keep going. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Haley Smith. Uh, this is my second year, I guess you can say, being a paraeducator for Dr. A.V. I joined the team um, this past April and came back for this uh, school year. And here soon I will be earning my degree in interdisciplinary studies to become a middle school health teacher. Good for you. Thank you. <laughs> One more. Last but yep. not least. Last but not least. I'm Richard Hancock, and I have worked with Dr. A.V. for for three years as a paraeducator, and I'm an artist and a social worker. So, what, what's, wonder- your, what's your medium? My mean, I, you know, I like to draw, and I also like to use wood. So, and I also like to oil paint. So, I've got quite a few that I like to work with. That's so. awesome. Have you ever thought about welding? I have actually. I almost went to Manhattan Area Technical College so that I could do, learn welding, so that I could create steel sculpture. Because I have a I have a son who's who's wired like you and he's thinking about that right now huh well and you know welder's not that expensive i mean you can get one for four dollars and you get in the garage and your son can tinker around with it it's pretty cool and and you get a cool helmet (laughs) (laughs) what's a paraeducator i'm not familiar with that term all right well um we assist dr avi in the classroom with um various learning activities we facilitate classroom discussions um, engage students in their coursework, and we just work together as a team to ensure that they are completing what they need to complete, but also having a good time as well. I think that's really important. Um, that's and time. obvious. When I, whenever I see a photograph of you guys, it's... But, yes, we do always have lots of fun, and that's that's why I think we make a pretty good okay, team. Okay, we'll so. talk about, check this out, classroom environment, and i got a story to tell you I think you're going to like. So I teach this class called World Civilization, and we're, we're learning about ancient China. And one of the things that you learn about in ancient China is this concept of qi, (laughs) this invisible flow of energy. Sure. Which then morphs into this this wonderful uh, house decoration idea of feng shui. So I started I started bringing up this in class, and one of my you know smart young folks looks around and says, "I think you could use a little of that." (laughs) (laughs) So I thought, "Hey, man, this is a great lesson plan idea." So, of course, I feng shui'd my classroom. And, of course, I made their students go home and feng shui their bedrooms, which their parents all appreciated. And, of course, they had to give me evidence of it. And guess what? That was two years ago, and my room is still feng shui'd and it did wonders in my classroom. Nice. Wow. Sometimes you walk in the classroom and there are white walls and those dreaded floodlights. Yeah. Um, just cookie cutter and simple. Mm-hmm. And those workspaces just, to me, have a... You know, make students feel kind of invisible, excuse me, invisible, marginalized. <laughs> yeah. uh, and they just don't feel like home. And right. so, to me, when they're less involved in a space, they're less likely to engage and likely to call it somewhere of their own. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, when you think about the kids and their typical day and sitting in these identical desks and sitting, sitting, sitting in these really bland rooms, it doesn't sound like much fun. No, when I choose to go somewhere, you know, I'll choose a coffee shop or somewhere inviting, somewhere with yeah. different kinds of lighting and seating and music. You know, I wouldn't choose to go sit somewhere in an institutional setting. <laughs> or make your house an institutional setting. Correct. <laughs> you know, and we spend so much time at school yeah. that you feel bad for some of these kids, and us too, when you're placed in that environment all day long every day. Right, and I think it probably impacts certain kids more than others. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like some people are kind of oblivious, but that's not the case with most. I mean, I think back when I was young and uh, James, I struggled with ADD, and this was in the 80s, and back then they didn't have pairs in rooms, and they weren't diagnosing things in the same way. Mm -hmm. But I remember sitting in classes that were institutional, as Dr. Avey said, and I just wanted to look out the window. Well, if I'm in a classroom nowadays with fluorescent lights, Teachers have the windows closed. I mean, I just wanted some sort of normal life, something that would relax me as a student, and it just didn't happen. That's a great point because I can tell you in my room, 
if I don't close the blinds, the kids can't see the projector. They cannot see the smart board. It's, it's, it's dim. And so that's an issue. But, man, I want to bring in that natural light because it's good for all of us. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll tell you something else, Richard. I was teaching in the 1980s, and my room didn't even have windows. It could have been March. It could have been uh, <laughs> October. I, I, there was times I felt, uh, oh, man, I felt very claustrophobic in that situation. Right. If you have a passion to transform student learning environments, check this out. Explain to my listeners how you do this because, you know, you're thinking about, okay, I've got this room. What can I possibly do with this cinder block room? Go to town, people. All right, Heather, why don't you talk first about what you enjoy most about the room? Um, one thing I'm looking at right now is all of our pictures. And um, Dr. Evie has a rather big wall space that says our family. And not only are there pictures of us four, but there's pictures of students from previous years. And I think that really helps them to feel like they're part of the family because that's what we are. We are a classroom family. And um, they also have kind of helped us um, come up with some funny pictures. And that just kind of livens up the room. You know, when you're at, when you're at home, sometimes um, there's pictures of your family throughout. And it just makes it feel like a more comfortable inviting space like she was talking about so that's something I really enjoy um and then along with the music I think I love how she has a playlist and (laughs) it's not but it's not just her playlist she's also asked for our input and what genres we like as well as the students and that helps them to become more engaged and then the students can talk with one another about what music they like and that helps to build relationships and find um, similarities within one another so those are two of my major ones. Definitely just the photos we have, which captures our, you know, silly moments and our more serious moments as well. Um, and then just the music, too. You know, there's nothing like a good song that can really, you know, raise you up during the day. <laughs> I just want to uh, piggyback off something you just said there because it was just huh? beautiful. You said enhances those relationships. Now, now, this is interesting. A lot of times kids don't know much about their teachers and they don't know much about one another. So you are talking about using the decor of your room as a vehicle to yes. enhance relationships. That's beautiful. Yes. No. And that's and that's exactly it. You know. And and the students comment on it, and I I think they really enjoy it. And there's some good moments, both inside outside of school, and some pictures of when we've done some service learning in our community as well. So. Well, I'm gonna put you on the spot here. I mean, I, I do have these things called show notes with pictures. So you gotta send okay. me one. <laughs> Well, no, we definitely will. We we would be more than happy to. Yeah, yeah. Any, anything uh, else on on that? Yeah, Haley, what do you think? What's your favorite thing about the classroom? Um, well, while mulling this over in my mind, I was sitting here in one of our really cool desks, which is much higher off the ground than normal desks, and in fact, they're so high that they have bar stools <laughs> as opposed to actual seating. Yeah. And so that aren't we all have these cool desks, and Dr. Evie has provided here in the classroom a rocking chair, a couch, and a really cool zebra-printed uh, beanbag. <laughs> so with this, she allows students to get as physically comfortable as they possibly can to do, to get all those creative juices just flowing and vibing. And so with me for that, because I will, you know, we do have, you know, students who um, have things like ADD and ADHD who are kind of fidgety. And so sometimes they don't like having to sit you know, at a hard surface desk with a hard seat. And in fact, they'd just rather go sit on a nice cozy couch and, mm-hmm. and do their homework in a, a more comfortable environment. And so to me, because I remember last year when I came in to see the class for the very first time, I mean, aside from all of the other awesomeness that goes on throughout this classroom I mean it's, it's really a sight to see but the, the seating because you know you walk in any classroom and you always see those you know typical desks that are you know mm-hmm. you know hip level with the classic seats and the chair are uncomfortable and you're you're fidgeting throughout the whole entire class and, mm-hmm. and you're paying attention because you're quite you're literally uncomfortable so okay, I have to ask you a question and I'm sure you've witnessed this so your students come in on day one the first day of school I'll bet you hear some interesting comments. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I enjoy hearing them later on. And, and um, by parents, you'll see them walk by and say, oh, my gosh, what is this class? And how can my kid get in it? And, right. Well, right. there's more of the story. But it's really nice to hear those comments. Kids really like it. I mm-hmm. think they feel really comfortable. Um, and they get to choose. They have a lot more choice, which is, which is always a benefit. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, what you're saying is so interesting because I, I'm not proud to admit this, but Every day at the end of school, you know, I just put myself out there like every other teacher in the United States and around the world, and I need downtime. 
I need to unwind for at least 20 to 30 minutes. So I'll put my smartphone on my chest, put on a podcast. I have two yoga mats. I roll them out behind my desk. (laughs) I got this little, like, foam roller. I put it under my knees. I lay on my back, and I'm gone for about 20 minutes. That's good. I crash for 20 minutes. Truly, (laughs) truly your tax dollars at work, let me tell you. (laughs) (laughs) Makes you better in the end. How about that? Yeah, I I feel like I've run a long race, and I need to just recharge for for 20 or 30 minutes. It does wonders for me. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. You should absolutely do that for yourself, for sure. Yeah. Now, you give me the idea to get a roller in here. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, listen. And, and, and you, you know, I mean, your kids, like, they're, you know, at 13, 14 years old. They're just limber and pliable and all that. Another good thing to do is get a four-inch PVC pipe and have the kids that are really limber and really loose uh, use that as a foam roller because that really gets into the muscles and loosens things up. And it's, it's a challenge. <laughs> good idea. And it, it's, it's, it's pretty that. cheap, too. <laughs> It's a lot cheaper than the foam rollers. There okay, you go. so so okay. what are uh, Mr. Richards? What about you? What's my favorite thing about favorite thing about this class? You may have to scoot up a little bit. Well, I think the thing that I noticed the most about your class immediately is the lighting. But I'd say my favorite thing is in Dr. Avi's class. Well, we we have a lot of nicknames, and I call her Doc. I don't even call her Dr. Avi. And you know, I was I was pretty impressed with how. Uh, reverential they're being to you. That's yeah. all. Yeah, usually that is Yeah, we, yeah, no. We do definitely, you know, we call her doc more often than that. Yeah. It's, like, it's like she's a talk show host, James. Yeah, we sit yeah. at her desk in this lovely, colorful room, and or Mary Poppins is maybe another good oh, analogy, yeah. because she understands children, and she laughs, and we laugh in here, and we joke, mm-hmm. and we have names, and we, we care about the kids' lives, and we want to know about them, so we ask them questions, and so... I would say my favorite thing about Dr. Avery's room or Doc's room would be that it's so conducive to laughter and just being able to be a kid and being able, being able to learn things about others that, like, maybe what the student's father does or, like, brothers and sisters do or if they're in college or if they're younger or whatever. But it's just getting to really know someone and take interest in them. That's my favorite thing. Uh, one thing. One thing I'm hearing this, like, kind of, like, bouncing is something like – uh, maybe you're getting just a little close to the microphone. I might. Oh, be, my, I bet I went to desk. We, on these uh, on these tall desks, they have uh, fidget bars. Oh. And I bet I'm fidgeting with it. Was really <laughs> we're just utilizing wait, the desk. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> we're, we're, we're leaving that in. That's perfect, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so check this out. <laughs> 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 That's perfect. So, so you got your you got your fidgety teachers. You got your fidgety kids. You got your fidget spinner. That's that's just beautiful, man. So. Uh, Fidget spinners. We're all yeah. about that. 3D printer. There we, can't we go. there we go. So what are some obstacles? I mean, you know, it, it sounds great. You know, you're going to go do this, but there are obstacles. Lay an obstacle oh. on me. Uh, well, the fire marshal just visited last week. Yep. Uh, and so he's not really fond of my Christmas lights. No, so you make- no, no. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, do they, what do they call that? Uh, chaining or whatever it is when you got. Yeah, have to make sure they're plugged into the wall and not into several extension cords. Yeah. <laughs> what a buzzkill. <laughs> uh, he was, he's not always thrilled about that. Um, but really, you know, once you have your administration's approval, and if you can show, you know, our administration's great here. They mm-hmm. are really accepting of us trying new things. And um, once you have their, their approval, just the student buy-in, but the biggest way to get around that is to involve them in the process. You know, find out how they want to sit, right. how find out what makes them tick, and and once you have their buy-in, it's their classroom. And once it's their classroom, you got them. Do you ever have a struggle with productivity? Well, we every now and then we'll have some. You know, the couch gets real comfy about two o'clock. Right. Uh, so we have to, you know, we just talk a lot about that. We have our core values, which I've spoke about before in our classroom, and we just try to revert everything back to that. Are you giving, are you uh, demonstrating grit when you're falling asleep on the couch? Maybe we have to sit somewhere else. And most of the time, they're, they understand. They're like, yeah, I better have to move. And Hey, look, and, mo- most people are falling asleep by two in the afternoon. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if I'm not walking out, it might be me. So, yeah. um, so we talk about making choices based on what we're doing. You know, sometimes it's more appropriate to sit at a, a desk or sit at a high stool or stand up. And sometimes it's appropriate to sit on the couch, and that's how I work at home. Yeah. I don't always 
you know, sometimes I can work in the couch and sometimes I have to stand up or sit somewhere else. So it's putting it back on them and the choices that they make. But to me, you know, for the most part, the kids are really receptive. They, yeah. they enjoy it. They don't take advantage of it. You know, we might find a few pencils or cookie crumbs in the couch cushions. It might be our biggest, our biggest thing, but right. that's easy stuff to uh, have them help us clean up. So. Well, this, this is a good segue because, like, uh, when I'm thinking about being a 14-year-old kid in Manhattan, Kansas, and I'm walking into Dr. Avi's room, I imagine you hear this now and then. Oh, my gosh, I'm so glad I'm here. I'm so glad I'm not in another class. I'm so glad I'm here. What, what types of transformations have you seen in young people? Mr. Richards, go ahead. Um, you know, we do hear that a lot. And I think the main thing is a lot of kids can be pretty standoffish at first, and they, they, they think maybe that we want something from them. And we don't, <laughs> yeah. you know, but it's more like what we're trying to do is welcome you into an environment to where, that's conducive to learning. And so you, you definitely see that transformation over time. It, some students take longer than others just based on what they're dealing with in their own lives. Mm-hmm. But you know what, Dr. A.V., She's such a great mentor to all three of us, and we've learned so much from her. The, and just the love that she has in her heart towards children has helped all three of us care more about kids. And that's really been – and the kids see it. I mean, kids can read adults better than adults can read adults. You know, I, I, I keep hearing that, that theme throughout this interview, that, that this, this surrounding, this, this atmosphere in this class is extremely conducive to relationships, which are obviously very conducive to learning. And I think it also helps that they see the four of us um, as a, you know, we, they see us with the respect. And, I mean, I have an amazing team, very fortunate. I've had, you know, the unfortunate time of having people in my room that maybe wasn't such a great team. And it's so much better when you have people that have the same core values, same expectations that you have. And the kids see that, you know, they see us working together and us being on their side and us wanting to have them um, and us expecting, you know, the sa- certain things from them, and I think they, that really helps out. Well, this is a good, this is a good um, thought that you just had, and let me, let me throw a question back at you. That, that you may or may not be able to recall something like this, but can you think of a time where maybe the environment, your, your, your classroom environment, helped facilitate a relationship that was strained, like between the students? Uh, you mean between student to student? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think just seeing that, knowing that they're part of a family. Okay. Knowing that we talk a lot about families and that families have problems and okay. families don't always get along and families can bounce back and families work together. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have all these things that we, we work on every day. And I think that really helps, you know, the environment. It's the low lighting, the soft music. Those things also help contribute it. But the relationships, you know, that's key. Let me ask One you the- this. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You know, one of the hilarious parts about it is, like, you'll, like last year I saw several kids in Dr. Avi's class that would war with one another a lot. Well, then once they started to understand the core values and, and the fact that we are a family in our classroom, mm-hmm. they could tease each other a little bit. But if somebody outside of that classroom picked on one of their classmates, they were the first ones to be there to defend their classmates. So you really saw that, mm-hmm. that tr- transformation become concrete. Well, that had to make you feel good. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah. As, long as, we, as long as they didn't take it too far. <laughs> and uh, back to her core value, you know, our core values within this classroom, um, not only did, you know, do we expect, you know, um, our kiddos to follow those, but we also made sure that we were demonstrating them as well. Each week we would, you know, decide, okay, maybe I need to work on um, self-awareness more, or maybe I need to work on my attitude more. And so we would put our names underneath each of the core values she has listed. So we weren't just expecting the kids to do it. We were also role modeling to them. Um, you know, ways in which they can, um, you know, meet those those different core values and, and demonstrate them throughout um, not only their time at school, but while at home and in the community as well. It's kind of like when I cleaned up my room. <laughs> 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 hey, listen, uh, I, I have to ask you this question. I'm curious. Do you guys have a seating chart? No. Nope. No. Nope. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> how, how many students do you have? Well, on the caseload as a whole, you know, I have 18. So I don't have a full class of 30 like some teachers might have. But when they come in for learning strategies or to work on a test, work on extra work, it's a total choice thing. Unless for some reason, you know, they're doing something with painting. I I prefer them not to on the couch just because middle school students aren't always the neatest. But uh, it's a total choice thing, and I find that they kind of sit in the same spots. Well, I was going to ask you that. Do you ever, like, make them move? Well, you know, 
positive. Like I said, if there's a problem, but for uh-huh. the most part, you know, for the most part, we can kind of just talk about it. Hey, you know, we remind them of the core values and, and remind us how we're, working, we're all working towards goals. And I mean, no, we really don't. I feel kind of silly saying that. But if we did, I guess we'd have to revisit where they're sitting and talk about, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's their choice. Okay, very good. And then finally, you, you got to give my listeners a first step or, or a piece of advice or something they could do perhaps tomorrow to make a more inviting room environment. Got it. Yeah, you know, I'll talk about this one real quick. Um, the first thing that I did was um, the lighting. That's a big change. Yeah. A lot of kids are bothered by the fluorescent lighting. So, yeah. And the sound bothers me. I can you hear that sound. So... You can. It's easy as taking the the piece of the fla- of the light and putting laminating a piece of tissue paper, like a blue color, and then putting it up in the light fixture, and that is okay by the fire marshal. I was gonna ask that. Okay. <laughs> um, and that was my first step a few years ago. Was just changing the lighting, and it's amazing. Even that little bit um, is huge. That's a you know, really good idea. There you go. Um, some teachers, you know, make have different designs or. A, mm-hmm different uh, messages maybe up there in the lights. Um, Lamps are always really good, too. A lot of our teachers are big users of lamps Mm -hmm. um, instead of the lighting. In fact, you know, when the lights are turned on in my room, the kids are kind of shy away like vampires. Oh, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, coming up with a theme also helps, you know, uh, just so when people, if you kind of have a theme of your room, whether it's a color theme or whether it's a style um, people will find for you a garage sale and they'll say, I bet this look like it would belong in your room. And it's amazing how quickly that kind of stuff can add up. It doesn't have to cost a lot. Well, see, I, if you've got kids bringing in stuff, they obviously have a tremendous sense of ownership, and that's beautiful. Yeah, they do. And we live in a college town, again, where there's a lot of things on the side of the road, you know, in the college <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, you know, it's, it's crazy when you, once you've decided and kind of start looking, if things are there. People are more than willing to bring in things and, and help you out. But the lighting is where I would start. It's an easy place to start. It makes a huge difference. Oh, yes. That is really a cool idea. That is a great idea. Well, thank uh, you. I'm, I'm glad the fire marshal didn't uh, throw cold water all over that. <laughs> that is what he recommended with laminating a piece of tissue paper and cutting it and sticking it up in those light cars, and that works pretty well. That is really cool. Well, look, man, you guys have been awesome. I, I, I've enjoyed this so much. I mean, here we are on a podcast talking about this, but I can visualize what you guys are saying, and that's great. Very good. <laughs> and you got to give us some pictures. We will. We'll put some, some pictures. All right, and then I want you to have a wonderful weekend in Manhattan, Kansas, and, and who do the Wildcats play tomorrow? We are yep. TCU. TCU. We're, I don't know about the weather, but you know what? <laughs> Cheer loud. Yes. So, so it's purple versus purple, correct? Right. Yeah, right. right. Yep. Wow. I love purple. <laughs> oh, there's going to be a lot of purple tomorrow at the stadium. Yep. It's a good color, and there's purple throughout this classroom. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> thank you guys so much, and you have a great weekend. You too. Yeah. You, you, too. Too. you as well. Thank you, James. See, so we are at the what you can do tomorrow section. I'm motivated to try to make my room more inviting. I loved what I did two years ago with Feng Shui in my room. It absolutely changed it for me and for my kids. And so I'm on board with what Casey and her friends are saying. But here I had some ideas for you folks for tomorrow. I want you tomorrow to just walk into your room and open the door and just look around objectively like you're walking into this room for the first time. And what do you see? (laughs) And then, you know, think about it. Just, just just, do some game plan. How could I improve this atmosphere? How could I make it less institutional? Uh, next, I want you to think about what Casey talked about, changing the lighting. That's an easy fix. I love the idea of putting some laminated tissues in the in, uh, underneath the uh, fluorescent lights. Wouldn't that be cool? Kind of disco-like? But it would definitely add some color, which I think is sorely needed. I'd like you also to talk to your kids. Do a little informal poll. Maybe you could create a a Google form in which kids would talk about what they like in room decorations and decor and atmosphere. And finally, challenge your kids to bring in something to decorate the room. It could be a picture of them. It could be something they drew. Obviously, it has to be appropriate. You can't bring in posters of, of models, male or female. But, you know, you you can exercise some judgment there. 
But wouldn't it be cool if all of a sudden your your kids had a hand in making your room theirs and creating that family atmosphere, which leads to engagement? If you do this, I think you're going to find that the enthusiasm for your class is going to go way up. (laughs) Good luck tomorrow engaging your kids. Show notes for this episode can be found at jamesallensternivant.com. If you enjoy Hacking Engagement, please subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes.